let me tell you guys, all right, this is going to be tough. This is going to be rough, okay? This is going to be real bad. So a conservative de uh, debate panelist brought together the biggest, brightest, greatest minds of, uh, of, of the Republican Party of the uh, of, of the conservative movement on YouTube they brought them all together from every corner of this of this uh, of this country dragged them all together into one massive thunderdome he closed the lid and locked it down and now we see the uh, uh, these these uh, <laughs> these intellectual masterminds going at it in the marketplace of ideas I'm talking about Christian conservatives battle with pro LGBT Republicans in this absolute bloodbath that is a uh, a debate panel. This is, let me tell you, this is gonna be real bad. All right, um, for one big reason, because Doyle and this chick right here, we all know for a fact they're gonna just club. They're gonna be pounding on Blair White, and probably not in a way that she would uh, like. All right, and as bad as Blair White is. I may have to jump in and defend her. How awful. I know. This th This is what the world has come to. That even I am ha have to be brought down to defending Blair. Okay. So here we are. The episode 134 of CTMZ on, what is this called? Slightly offensive? Yeah. You know what it is. Let's go. Whoop. Sorry. Whoops. Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being- Carlin, Carlin. Well, um, well, I celebrated that you were banned on Twitter I, I because you repeatedly I, tweeted I that my husband should be deported, Lauren. He's a legal alien. I don't- <laughs> You were- I blocked you on Twitter because you said my husband should be deported. Holy, holy crap. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet. It's what I'm- right. almost, I, It's- well, I, I, I let you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Ah oh, no! Please, dude! Yikes! Can, can you? <laughs> it's already. Holy crap! They can't. They can't. They can't stop the bigotry. They can't. They cannot stop. Even with someone who agrees with them on like ninety nine percent of things, they could not possibly hold back the hatred oh my gosh the gut punch oh no all right well and that just so you know that is the teaser that is the 28 seconds into the video you your husband should be deported grow out your mustache and stop living like you do you, you filthy degenerate holy shit <laughs> There's been a lot of arguments on Twitter recently where people cannot decide what it means to be right wing or what the future of the party is. Now, if you don't know why that's important, well, just look around you at the radical leftism, all the insanity in the culture and a president who borrowed an election and a country who wonders what is our borrow a, a president that borrowed the election. What he took what he what what well, uh, on November 4th or like 5th when the election was like really, really decided. What, uh, Joe Biden walked up to Donald Trump and fucking picked his pocket. He he uh, took slipped his wallet out of his back pocket and saw his uh, I won the election card. He took it out and then put it in IOU and slipped it back in and then ran out the back door. What are you talking about? He borrowed the election. Is Trump coming back? What does that mean? Borrowed an election. What dumb shit is this? Future and who is going to save us from this absolute madness? Well, a lot of people seem to disagree, which is why I brought a panel of guests on to talk about what the future of the right wing looks like and how we win back our country. We're going to bring on the screen. Uh, I went ahead and I invited on a myriad of people. I have. Uh OK, so that's what this whole thing is about. So he brought on he brought on the um, uh, the Christian fascist and the um, uh, uh, and the homo fascist together. So Christian fascists versus homo fascists duke it out in the marketplace of ideas. It's just like taking your uh, uh, it, it, like um, uh, toy figures and just smashing their heads together. Just just watching them, just watching the like pieces fly off. That's what this is. This whole thing is going to be. How do we defeat the radical left? How do we do it? Carlin, Bor he's called Carlin Borisenko. Well yeah, done. Awesome commentator. We also have uh, Lauren Witzke. Uh, she ran for uh, uh, Congress in Delaware. We also have Blair White, YouTuber as well, and John so Doyle, the YouTuber, and they're all getting these debate. Yeah, that's a pretty bad so one. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this as we get into this. Starting with Lauren, um, how do you describe yourself politically? 
Okay, so I am socially conservative. I'm advocately, I've always been economically populist. Uh, economic populism ooh, is the future of the, our party. Ooh, the Nazbol arc, I see. Okay. Oh, so she's, she's, just, she's just straight Nazbol. All right. I am socially conservative and economically populist. As you can see, I believe that everyone should have health care. All the right ones should have health care. Right? Not the filthy, disgusting, dirty, heathenous hordes trying to crawl into our country. Party, however, preserving social. No, this is why I didn't put her in any of the titles. I've never heard of this chick before in my entire life. But she's giving me like right, like a reverse world, um, like a, a negative dimension, mirror world, uh, Marianne Williamson vibes. You know what I'm saying? Just like uh, just parallel universe, bad, rea bad ending, Marianne Williamson conservatism within the Republican Party um, is a real passion of mine. I'm very pro-family. I'm very pro-life. Uh, my whole motto is I just like to win and save babies. So that's what I do. Awesome. Uh, Blair, go ahead and tell us where you lean politically. Yeah, every political quiz I've ever taken matches center right. So that's me. I don't have sort of the popular story everyone loves of like, I'm a former liberal. I'm a lifelong Republican, always voted that way. And yeah, that's me. I'm definitely a little bit less socially conservative. And uh, that's where I land. John, go ahead. It's a pretty clear copy paste uh, between Lauren and myself, I think. Fiscally populist and uh, socially conservative. Carl Dude, why is he sitting in some un. Wait, where is he? Wait, wait, I'm genuinely curious. Why is John Doyle here, right? Doyle has a, a recording studio. Why isn't he at a studio? Where is he? Why is he in his, like, grandma's unfinished basement? Wait, do you see? Is that a piece of insulation over. That's a window. Why is there a piece of insulation? What is happening here? Is he in some sort of like torture dungeon? Is this where he keeps the femboys? Carlin, are you different than them? Yeah, I'm a little bit different in that, um, I, you know, some people say I'm a former liberal. I'm actually a current liberal. I have never stopped being a liberal, even though I did leave the Democratic Party. Um, I Politically, on my political compass test, I tend to be right in the center. And I frankly just want common sense people to come up with common sense solutions. <laughs> I want common sense people to come up with common sense solutions. This is why I always criticize the left and they're, and they're the real problems, but I always identify with the right. I'm, I'm right in the middle. Awesome. So as we get into this, I want to let you know something important. This is a, the first question we're going to jump into, which is what is the future of the right wing, right? If we're going to win a war, if we're going to fight the left, we've got to figure out who's on our side. And there's a split of trying to figure out if the future of the right is a conservative, moral Christian party that is a strong nationalist background or if it's this big tent party full of liberals, libertarians, disaffected left, etc. Before we jump into that, I want to give a- Oh my gosh, what an incredibly loaded question. Are we- We have to- We have for, we have to figure out how to defeat the left, guys. And we have to figure out- We have to make sure to see where our party's going. Are we going to be the moral, righteous, upstanding, new crusade, Christian, beautiful, shining city on a hill party, or the disgusting, depravitous, um, uh, um, uh, uh, podge collection of, uh, loosely, uh, of loo loosely defined, degenerate, left-wing, uh, disaffected cringe lords who are here to do nothing but get a page. Well, we, we should discuss, but first, here's a word from our sponsor, Soup Buckets. Is the uh is the apocalypse coming? Let's uh let's not find out. Buy my soup bucket. Wait, what's what's a huge this? shout out to our sponsor for today, guys? Yep, I knew it. The world is getting crazy, and I'm telling you, it is no, not. Wait, wait, no, wait, no, 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 no. Is he? Wait, am I right? Am I right? Is is he selling the buckets? Is he selling the uh the slot buckets? Getting easy out there. Not only do you need to have defensive equipment, you need to own guns, but you need to have some way to conceal your guns to carry them okay, around. No, okay. Just why I want to tell you about Northwest Retention. Northwest Retention has a few goals that are amazing. This is a company I love personally and own their products. Number one, cringe. I don't care. I don't give a shit. As well, goodbye, wife. Who the fuck clothing. was that? Oh my gosh. So my question is this: As we look to take back the country from the radical left, and we seek to make it a stronger place, how are we going to do that? Is it a by building a stronger conservative Christian moral party, or is it b building a big tent party of libertarians, the disaffected left, conservatives, etc.? It's still such a such a loaded question. Do we have a moral party or a big tent party? Are, are we going to have morals or are we going to have no morals? Like what what is that question? Like with the questions, we'll try to go in the same order. We'll start with Lauren. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm really confused why this is a discussion about the future of the right when we have a liberal, actually, she's a Democrat with one good opinion. Uh, we also have a transgender on here. Uh, you know, I don't really think we should be giving a platform uh, to this kind of degeneracy, which... <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Holy. L listen, when I when I preface this by saying that 
Blair White was going to be clubbed on, I I was not memeing. All right, this lady, she she does not just have a dislike for transgender people. This is just full on disdain. She checks under her bed for the transgenders, um, a, a, a looking to force transition her in her sleep or something. This is incredible to me. She's looking for the transgender goblins out there. She's trying to shut them down. She doesn't even want Blair platformed for being trans. We have a transgender here. We don't even want to see them exist. That's wild. Look at her face. See, this is the, we'll, we'll, we'll get into this like a little bit later, but this is the problem with being one of these like pick me. Oh, I'm, I'm one of the good ones sort of, uh, uh, marginalized groups is because you end up like this. You, you end up just like this, like Blair white here getting constantly consistently clubbed over and over again. When you identify with a party that does has nothing to do as that wants nothing to do with you, but your ultimate uh, destruction, not your moral destruction, not your ideological destruction. You as a person, they want you to be ev like eviscerated. They don't, they want you to be dematerialized. Um, but okay. Is a uh, gateway drug to pedophilia. You know, I absolutely. Holy wait, what? No, I paused it. My bad. I paused it before the even, it gets even worse. Being trans is a gateway to pedophilia. What is like, it's like the uh, being trans is the freaking heroin. It's the crack cocaine uh, of, of, uh, of like a, um, uh, gender, tra uh, of like gender. That's wild to me. That's wild to me. We disagree. You know, we were the party of traditional marriage. We were the party that opposed gay marriage. We've always been that party. We've always been the party of family. We won handedly in 2016 without the LGBTQ vote. We started losing when we started compromising. So I'm really curious why, uh, people who are libertarians, I mean, you have a party of freaks who love the free market that you can join. But don't come into our party and try to influence it because that is how we are Holy losing. Shit. And in case you haven't noticed, we are losing. Uh, you know, they are now advocating for chemical castrations for children. We're spotlighting transgenderism at CPAC. Um, and I am a traditional Christian conservative. I believe in family. I believe that family is the foundation of everything that this country was founded on. And no, I do not believe that we should be compromising our values and spotlighting a lifestyle. It's not even gatekeeping. See, the thing is not even gatekeeping. Um, this is way worse than a gate. It's a massive, she's like building the Himalayan mountains in between her and everybody who doesn't, who vaguely is different than her. Like we're, we're spotlighting transgenderism. They're chemically castrating children. Oh my, oh my gosh. No one's doing this. No one's doing this. All right. We won just fine without the L, without the LGBTs. And then you have a whole group of degenerates who want, who want to be like, this language is so incredibly moralized. I don't even know if there's a possible, if there's a, a possible way to engage with it besides just laughing at it. It is incredible. It is, it is incredible to me to believe that this person is uh, should be taken seriously uh, in our political climate. Lone Wolf, hey, thanks for the follow, for joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pog. That is a gateway drug to pedophilia every single time. And where, wait, where, I've never even heard this before. How, where, where does this happen? That like trans people existing uh, uh, opens up a portal to a, uh, to an alternate dimension of just pure pedophilia. When does this happen? I, when, man, I, uh, I guess I haven't been keeping up with the, uh, the, the new fat, uh, Facebook conspiracy trends, huh? You cannot deny it isn't because it's here. Blair, would you respond? It's here. I think that there's a difference between you spoke sort of to gender ideology, which is definitely rampant on college campuses, definitely taking over culture. I think that's different than just people who, as individuals, may technically be gay, lesbian, bisexual, any of the above. Um, and I think that it's possible to fight against gender ideology with while holding true that there are going to be people that are just different in life. I definitely am not here to speak to the future of social conservatism because that's just not my lane. But as far as the party, um, I think that a big tent is most likely the future. I think that speaking, knowing my generation and a lot of people my age, which is mid twenties and, and Gen Z a little younger, I think that they voted for Trump the first and second time or just the second time um, because Trump kind of ushered the party into an era of a little more secularism. I don't think he was overtly religious. I think to an extent he was a little performative with, with religion and with prayer and things like that. Um, and I think that attracted a lot of new voters and um, I'm not sure that you know, going full force, religious social conservatism is really the future. Oh my gosh. Blair got, Blair got so cucked here. Holy shit. Like this person, 
Imagine not being able to defend yourself here. It, this is actually really sad. I'm not sure because I uh, this is actually going to be really sad because this this person and Doyle probably are going to be hammering her over and over and over again about how about how she's disgusting and degenerate and not real and, and destroying the party and causing pedophilia and this that and the third. Um, and she's going to respond back with, well, I can't really speak to social conservatism, but I think the, the big party, uh, big tent model would be really good for getting the new voters in. What did you, what did you say? And then they start just using slurs against her like, uh, oh gosh, John, can you respond? Yeah, I think that the concept of a big tent movement is basically the sort of intra-party democracy that prevents us ultimately from being effective at actually wielding power. And this could date back even to what's referred to as the Reagan coalition, where we tried to unite social conservatives with libertarians, uh, with fiscal conservatives. And then we created something which ultimately didn't last in effect, where we're now on the back foot with things such as gender identity. And even now we're trying it, you know, with pandering to different minority groups, different interest groups, which will never give us more than 8% of the vote, for example. So imagine trying to justify your uh, your own uh, garbage political ideology by saying, oh, we were we wait <laughs> instead of being like oh we keep losing because we don't know how to appeal to people instead of saying that they say oh we keep losing because we keep appealing to more people we keep trying to not be super homophobic n super transphobic uh super classist we, we keep trying to be better people because this actual argument what it is is we're trying to be better people, and that's wrong, and this is why we keep losing. We're on the back foot now, not because people are, are moving past our garbage, uh, archaic, uh, draconian uh, beliefs in the world. It's because we just keep pretend, we keep trying to be better people, so they keep, uh, so they keep winning. We have to just go worse. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Doyle's going to bring back the freaking uh, uh, gallows or something like public executions. Who knows? Like you, maybe he wants to start crucifying uh, trans people. I don't know. I think that to actually try something different would be to legitimately establish a strong party with the values. Yeah, he's like, yeah, uh, Reagan didn't kill enough gay people with the uh, AIDS epidemic. He wanted to start injecting people with the uh, uh, with AIDS. There were nominally in support of and actually wielding the power effectively when we we are given the chance instead of getting into power and then doing nothing and trying to pander to these groups thinking that we're going to own the libs and take their voting base away from them yeah carlin i'm interested to hear your perspective because obviously this would be a, a question that would pertain to you directly since you admit that you're a liberal and you just registered as a republican i mean give us your thoughts yeah, i did well the fact of the matter is that maga is not a religious movement maga is a political movement and in order to win elections you have to win votes the fact of the matter is that donald trump has never cared about gay marriage it was never something that he was against dude hung out at studio 54 why would he Donald Trump was never against gay marriage. Wait, what? He literally petitioned the Supreme Court to overrule gay marriage and and, and, and like uh, uh, Title Seven laws to protect gay people. What? Huh? Never heard of it. Nah, he never cared. I am. Hey, look at this picture. He was standing next to a rich gay person. That's crazy, right, dude? Absolutely idiotic, cucked behavior. He care, and so I am on the side of winning too, Lauren. I'm on the side of winning elections. The fact of the matter is that Donald Trump created a big tent strategy that brought 10 million more people to him in 2020 than he did. Is Blair okay? Is Blair, <laughs> is Blair okay? Blair, honey, are you all right? Dude, look at her face. Holy, is she, she must be sipping on Depresso over there. That's not a, that's not a good look for a girl. Um, dang. Yeah. I'm not trying to find a good place for my camera. Wait, would this, maybe this would be a here. Sorry, I'm trying to find like a good place for my camera. I'm going to shrink the camera down a little bit. I'm going to place it right here. Zoop. There we go. Did in 2016. And if we go back and look at the history of the Republican Party and when they lost the culture war the first time, Ronald Reagan offered a big tent. He said, everyone is welcome in this big tent. He won two terms. George H.W. Bush followed him. The Republicans were in control for 12 years until what happened? The moral majorities tried to swoop right in and started legislating Christianity. And that is when they lost the culture war. That is when they started losing voters, when they started trying to legislate their religion the first time around. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of a religion or the prohibit or they're prohibiting the free exercise of their of their thereof. So it protects your right to practice your religion as much as it protects my right to practice mine. This is not a question of religion. If you want to do whatever you want to do in church, that's fine. Go talk to your church elders. Go talk to your deacons. Exclude anyone you want from your church. But the fact of the matter is that I would really like if the Democrats didn't control everything. And in order for that to happen, we need to win. And that means building the broadest po po possible coalition of voters that we can. And that's what I think we should do. Actually, Carlene's points weren't they weren't too bad right when uh, uh when lots of these people try to start instituting like like christian sharia law that's when lots of people start to get really turned off um 
it, it is true. Uh, these these conservatives uh, actually it was pretty good for her to point out that uh, the, the the Constitution, the America that they believe that they would that they want to have is an imagination, and the America that actually exists uh, runs contrary to their uh, to their beliefs. You can't start instituting your own like religious doctrine in in America. It shouldn't work that way. It was actually uh, meant to be uh, expressly against that. Right? It was supposed to be about uh, religious freedom, but they don't want religious freedom. They want religious supremacy. Um, so I mean, I mean, pretty pretty decent points. Besides being uh, conservative and a Republican, yikes, Lauren. That's pretty much opposite of what you brought up and what you were saying. Um, could you, you please respond to that? Yeah. So you know, Donald Trump, he did do things that made the church have to make excuses for him. His Globo Homo initiative. Uh, <laughs> oh no, she has all of the terms. Is she going to bring up like the New World Order and uh, the Great Reset here and the Great Replacement? Globo Homo. I'm telling you, dude. See, it's the Christian fascist versus the homo fascist. The fuck is the global homo? Global homo is a um. It's also a, it's 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 a term to talk about how um the new world order uh globalist um uh, uh elites elites are now pushing homosexuality to um uh, to pacify the masses. So we're too busy um eating eating out each other's booty holes instead of um. starting straight family structures or something um big gay it's true they're they're pushing the big gay it's it's, it's actually the the same exact thing that um it, yeah it's also it's also anti-semitism because lots of these like globalists the the bankers them soros uh, it, it plays right into that hands, uh, the hands of oh these people they're they're working behind the scenes to destroy us or something, um, and you know they're usually the white people that they're destroying right and who are who are the people that are destroying hmm. they uh, for them lots of these people the, their last names end with like Berg or Stein or Steen or whatever um, really interesting uh, that it's it's uh, this person is a single step away from literal um, Nazism but you know ended up losing him a significant amount of the Christian vote and we are the base of this party we make up a huge portion of this party, a way bigger portion than the liberal libertarian sector of the party, no matter how much they want to tell you. Um, you know, so him making those compromises is probably a big part of why we lost, you know, we lost the House in 2018. You know, in 2017, we had the House, the, uh, the executive branch and the Senate, and we still failed uh, on conservative issues. They refused to stand up for life. You know, they still passed a budget that, um, actually made us force Christian taxpayers to fund Planned Parenthood. You know, so every vote lost on social conservative, uh, consult social conservatism is, you know, we are significantly more. We are the party that was established in traditional marriage. So I'm curious when the liberals and the transgenders decided that it was their duty to come and infiltrate our party to make it successful because we were doing just fine. Um, we started actually losing votes when we started pandering. Uh, we lost a significant amount of our base, uh, enough to make an effect and make a dent into uh, the electorate by compromising our values. The only way forward is to stay true to our values that we've always been and established on and win with them. You know, it's the weakness. People value strength over anything else. And when we started showing weakness and compromise, that's when we started losing. Dude, I'm telling you, listen, I don't see other people saying it enough. This is just 100% true. And some people get mad at me for this, but it's 120 thousand percent true that lots of these conservatives right now they're like orcs okay they are they're like orcs and let me uh, let me explain it to you that what they care about is power and strength and performing that power and strength that's what they care about all right it's literally ooga booga bonk they 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 unironically see society as you waddling around in, in your like leopard skin uh toga and uh, you take power by who has the biggest bonk stick and who's biggest. Whoever's the biggest and strongest and bonks the hardest, they they now have the power. And that's the only thing that they actually care about. You just you walking around like ooh, 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 and bonk. That's it. That's actually just what they care about. Sound like, just like porn? I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, give me power. Yeah, power. It's just might might equals right. Ooga booga bonk is just what they really care about. It is it is mind-blowing that uh i mean at least she's saying the quiet part out loud uh that, that that she actually agrees with that point she's just um just an orc we're fighting the orcs okay we are we're fighting the orcs um and i don't think that is something that we should continue i think that we should remain the party of jesus christ the party of life the party that celebrates family and makes it as easy as possible for americans to get married and have children why would i celebrate a lifestyle that uh people can't reproduce you know you can't reproduce you just can't um um because they're happy 
<laughs> and they're not hurting anybody. Like that, that's one of the really big things. They're happy and they're not hurting anybody. I don't care about what you're doing, who you stick your dick in, or who you rub your vagina against. Um, if, if if you're happy and not hurting anybody, personally, I couldn't care less. Um, right? I I couldn't care less, and that's fine. Yeah, and trans people can reproduce. So I I don't know I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe she maybe she was just talking about gay people. Um, or, or, or something. Uh, no, yeah. Tra for one, trans people can reproduce and even gay people can reproduce as well. Just not necessarily with each other sometimes, but who cares? What, what, what does that have to do with anything? Wait, genuinely curious. It, would she be against like an infertile woman? Like what about a woman with like, with a, uh, who's, who's had like menopause? She looks like she's getting up there in age. She looks at the very least like early, like late, like mid forties or something. Um, to me personally, she's probably going to go through meta uh, menopause sometime soon. Uh, is she just not valuable anymore? Should she just like jump off a cliff when she can't have children? Like what's happening? Gay trans people can reproduce. Yes. I mean, with each other a lot of the time they can't or, they're, or, or don't want to in that, uh, in that respect. Post menopausal women give themselves to the sea. Yeah, they just run. They just run into the the Boston Harbor, and they'll they'll uh, never be seen again. So having families, uh, that is the future of the party. We started losing when we started compromising. Also, gay people and trans people can have uh, uh, families, and lots of them do. Actually, statistically, um, ooh, look at Doyle's forehead. Hey, you should click that subscribe button. Isn't that crazy? Um, actually, um, gay people's kids, uh, tend to do better. Uh, it, at the very least in school in their outcomes than uh than straight than uh, lots of straight families do so isn't that interesting big tent okay. is a lie um so it is in there real fast and give, give blair a chance to respond to that it's a lie i think they're indoctrinating us with the transgenders I think the concept of more people infiltrating a party isn't necessarily what has happened wait a second i'm sorry i didn't know that blair white was so incredibly like drunk on herself she has her own picture on the wall that says blair white this isn't even like something that's fan made. This is something she made for herself. Wait, in the article write up that says Queen of Controversy? And another picture of herself on the red carpet. Holy crap. It might be fan art. I don't know. This, I think this is something that she made. And then like a picture of her on uh, on like the red carpet or whatever. Dude, this is this is this is just the uh this is just the narcissism uh corner right here. She loves this one. I think that the modern left has shown its hand to such an extent that people are just being extremely turned off by it. Um, I, again, being a lifelong Republican voter, I've never had a moment where I entered the party and then had plans to change it from within. I think that every American has a right to vote in any direction that they choose. Um, and I think especially over the next four years of the Biden presidency, there's probably going to be a lot more people who are uh, red-pilled, I guess, is going to be the term, um, and wanting to vote you know, in the opposite direction of how things ended up in November. And I also would say, you know, Trump got the most votes of any sitting president in history. I think that's true. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it so much. Dude, almost every single sitting president has the most amount of votes of any sitting president ever because there keep being more people in the country. So obviously more people keep voting. So obviously the raw number goes up. This happens every time. Like, I can't believe they actually keep running with this. Donald Trump got the most amount of votes of any presidential candidate in the history of America. Except for that one guy, Joe Biden. But except, for, but if you disregard that, he's, he's so popular, guys. Right, that's right. And um, I think there's a reason for that. I think what I spoke to earlier was the push towards more secularism. And I think that while social conservatives and religious conservatives still voted Trump because it was the right direction, and like you said, they did make a lot of excuses and compromises on their beliefs, um, I think Trump really, and Trumpism, is the future of the party and the future of success. I'm also one of those people that, I don't know, this might have to be edited out for YouTube, but I'm not completely convinced that the election was won by Biden by completely... Oh no, dude! They all—they're—they've all, they all just hopped on the conspiracy. There's no way that we could just be politically unpopular, and Donald Trump is the least popular president in presidential polling history, and was extremely divisive, and it became uh, his absolute detriment, and fumbled on COVID every single time he was tossed the ball. Um, it, it can't possibly be that. They, he must have. Joe Biden must have stolen it. Sleepy Joe. There's no way Sleepy Joe could win, right? Um, legitimate means so. We can say it was um, I think what. We can say it was borrowed.
borrowed. <laughs> oh, so that's why he said borrowed. So he can try it. Oh, because if you guys didn't know, YouTube changed its terms, changed its terms of service to where if you start uh, being like the election was stolen, the pot belly goblins from the third dimension came here to work with Joe Biden to uh, drop us into Hades um, uh, by stealing the election and switching boats with, uh, with with like fragments of the soul of Hugo Chavez. If you start doing stuff like that, they're going to ban you. So now they they moved on to a dog whistle that's like, ah, you think they, ah, they, he, <laughs> he borrowed it. He just borrowed it. You can't say oh, stolen, yeah. but you okay. said the election was borrowed. <laughs> um, and so even though, yeah, Biden won, I still think Trump is the future of. Yeah, they did. They really did it. Of the right in general. So. Okay, John, why don't you jump in there? I think that's correct in that Trump is the future of the Republican Party. But what's interesting about that um, is that during his first campaign and even the second campaign, he really didn't touch on LGBT issues that much. I mean, you know, he, he held up the flag, I think, at a few events at the advice probably of people like Jared Kushner. But if you look at where his voters actually sit on the political spectrum, they're not the right wing liberal. I, I just think it's really interesting that all of these pe that all of these guys really hate Jared Kushner. You know, I'm not. Wait, what did Jared Kushner do so wrong? Right. For them to hate them. I really feel like it's just like laden sort of um uh metastasized anti-semitism just sitting in there isn't he jewish yeah he's the jewish one so them always being like mm, it was it was kushner from the inside all along destroying his presidency i'm pretty sure it's just Authoritarians that a lot of big donors would like the party to be. They're actually basically authoritarian in the center. And so if you look at where they poll on issues such as like gay marriage versus traditional marriage or like transgender bathroom issues, like whatever, they're all like very, uh, I guess you'd say authoritative and, and conservative in that, and that they're in support of traditional and socially conservative policies. And so that's where the momentum in the party is. And so if you're going to come over and vote for Republicans because you agree with their positions on foreign policy or fiscal policy or what have you, that's all in fine. But what we can't do is start to compromise and say that like you can come over here and we're actually going to pander to you as well and give you positions at CPAC. And I think it's interesting because a lot of people that are trying to join. Wait, so he's like, it's OK if you want to be a part of the Republican Party, if you're one of these filthy, disgusting degenerates. Um, but don't ever expect that we're going to treat you with any modicum, just a, even a drop, just a smidgen, even a drop of human decency. You are not. He's like you are below human standards. You should not even be given a platform. You should maybe he thinks that they should be hung or something. I'm not sure. Um, but like authoritative, authoritative means that uh, they come there and they're like, hey, can you stop saying that we should that 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 the government should throw us in jail for existing? Um, that's what they mean by authoritative. Um, just just so you know, the dog whistle for authoritative is you ask to be treated with human decency. That that's what it is. Because for them. Treating you with any sort of real respect means that you are infringing on their on their rights to hate you. Join the, the Republican Party, the conservative movement, and then bring to light more of these like LGBT issues are basically showing their hand in that they're not actually conservative. And I'm not speaking about you guys specifically, just like the rhetoric that I deal with online, because fundamentally the idea of like LGBT issues is about the enshrinement of total equality, which is fundamentally not a conservative idea. Conservatives believe in hierarchy and natural law and, and the idea that we can have total equality across the board for different types of relationships or different types of marriages, quote unquote, is just fundamentally not a conservative idea. And so if we want to have success in the future as a party, we have to actually like maintain a strong footing on what it actually means to be conservative, which we haven't done in the last 70 years, I'd say. Holy crap. See, this is this is one of the good reasons why I like Doyle, because Doyle at, at the very you can say whatever you want about Doyle. But Doyle owns the bad decisions. Not only does he own the bad decisions, he makes other Republicans own the bad decisions as well. Because he's like, if you are a Republican, you have to be the worst possible human being. 70 years, you mean before the civil rights? Yeah. So uh, maybe he wants to go back even before. The, I Actually, I'm actually pretty sure he wants to like revoke the like 1964 like Civil Rights Act because he because he thinks that um um treating uh, treating everyone with human decency means that um. You're um, you're abandoning the, the natural hierarchy and um, uh, you I, I don't know, maybe he even thinks that you should abolish um, uh, the abolishment of slavery, too, because that's natural law as well. Um, I don't know. How was the uh, how were the pyramids built, my dude? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think actually, like unironically, Doyle is the uh, at least he I think he really believes the stuff that he's saying and they're really bad. But I mean, it, it, it makes sense to me. He's like, yeah, conservatives, they hate equality. They want natural law. If I have the most amount of coconuts, then you have to suck my dick to live. Um, uh, yeah, they they no equality, and they have to um, uh, and you have to keep to extremely strict guidelines. Maybe even he likes something like a caste system. Know your get in line and know your place. These are one of these things, right? Get in line and know your place are one of the most important 
um, uh, aspects of conservative ideology for lots of these people. If you even take a step out of it, um, you, sh you should be uh, societally and maybe even economically uh, uh, punished for, uh, for such an act of wanting rights. Yeah, so I want to kind of tweak this a little bit to you, Carlin. Um, as, as the, like Nazi Germany, maybe? That question that he said, right, is like, this is the question a lot of people ask on the traditional right, is that the right has been defined, uh, the right has been defined as being a conservative party, and that has been traditionally what it has been. Now, you say that you identify as a liberal, but you are a Republican. I would say that's more of a new development in the party. I'd say that it is, uh, you know, related to Trumpism, to MAGA, or as Lauren calls it, the Globo Homo movement, which I will spit out my coffee when she said that. I, I find all this stuff quite hilarious sometimes. Uh, but with that being said, you know, if we're going to take the big tent party uh, approach, right, and we're going to bring in all of these people that are uh, of different uh, viewpoints like yourself, what what is this conservative party conserving? And how is it any different than, let's just say, being a liberal party from 10 years ago? Well, right now, it's not conserving anything because they don't have any power because they lost elections. But I do want to uh, speak to John's point specifically in that he used the magic word, which is pandering. The left panders to the LGBT movement. Trump did advocate for LGBT policies. He did so by appointing the first openly gay member of the cabinet, which the left likes to... Wait, pause. <clears throat> You're confusing your own argument. You just said that people should know their place, not that they want rights. What? Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's against like the civil rights movement because that means that you don't know your place. Is that If you don't understand the argument, that's a you problem, not a okay. Um all right. Well, if that's the case, then I uh then I just don't care anymore. So, let's move on. Well, right now, it's not conserving anything because they don't have any power because they lost elections. But I do want to uh, speak to John's point specifically in that he used the magic word, which is pandering. The left panders to the LGBT movement. Trump did advocate for LGBT policies. He did so by appointing the first openly gay member of the cabinet, which the left likes to forget about all the time. He did support this community. He just didn't do it in a way that was pandering. But I Wait, and what, wait, what substantial... That's really... That's extremely interesting, right? Because what, what substantial ways did, did Donald Trump help the lgbt movement actually provide like real pol like uh real solutions for um uh and real policy for the lgbt people for lgbt people in this in this country what was it like she I, in in saying that donald trump didn't pander all she did was talk about something that was just pandering which was just uh appointing someone who was openly whatever uh, i'm not sure what that person was but uh, openly part of the lgbt uh community i guess so if, if that's the case what uh, i would imagine if he actually passed down some policy like some non non um uh what is it um non um non pandering policy i would imagine that he that he could name that she could name something literally anything that donald trump did that's positive for lgbt people but she didn't so it seems like She's just bullshitting. So <clears throat> here's the thing: all the right, all Donald Trump did was pander to uh, uh to like LGBT people. That's why he held up that like Trump for Trump for gay people, whatever flag. And then he went on to try and do the most to try and take away their rights. And thankfully, the Supreme Court stepped in and stopped him uh, several times. Actually, thankfully. Uh, but he tried to take away their rights several, several, several times over. They just don't care about that. And then Joe Biden instituted actual policy to help these people, but I guess they don't care. I guess that's pandering. It's not pandering when I, when I don't do anything for these people and say that I will, but it is pandering when you say that you will do something for these people and then actually do it. Extremely interesting. Again, like I, I'm a liberal because I believe in individual liberty, individual freedom. I'm very concerned with preserving specifically our First Amendment values and, and all the amendments specifically. But the First Amendment is really my jam, which, again, does not allow for the state to legislate based on one religion's specific values. But if we want to talk about religion, we can talk about uh, a verse from the Bible, which is 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 2, which says, I urge then, first of all, the petitions, prayers, and sessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And I bring that up because that is the only place in the New Testament that really touches on the relationship of Christians to government. And what does it say? It says they should pray for the, the people in leadership so that they may live peaceful and quiet lives 
lives in godliness and holiness. So what does that mean? It means that we should be working on electing a government that allows people to practice whatever religion they want and to live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. And the only way that we can do that is by creating a broad coalition of voters who win elections. That's what we should be talking about first and foremost is how we win elections. Um, I'm, before we go, I'm gonna go to John because John was John was sort of laughing during that. And so, why are you laughing? I was I was humored by uh, the biblical substantiation for having more gay people in government. I, I just thought that was kind of funny. But uh, no, I, I don't think that like even you push back on what I had said about the the pandering with well Trump appointed these people and he appointed these people, so he was actually like you know serving the interests of the community. It's interesting because as you noted, the left will still ignore that because they control the narratives and they control the media. And so really, no matter what Trump does to pander to that, however many percent of the what is it three percent of the voting demographic isn't actually going to serve interest. And I, I just don't think that the reason Trump didn't win in 2020. Assuming the election was totally legitimate was because he didn't uh, serve the interests of the LGBT community enough. I mean, Trump won in 2016 because of immigration, because of free trade and because of foreign policy. It wasn't at all because of uh, social issues as it pertains to like, you know, the interests of, of gays and transgenders or what have you. Um, Actually, Donald Trump won purely because of social policies. I think so. Personally, Donald Trump was the culture war president. He brought the culture war to uh, he brought the culture war to the mainstream. He brought like the real culture war to the presidential election where it wasn't where it wasn't seen uh, as, as popular as it was. He was the culture war president. Um, and I don't believe and lots of conservatives keep trying to say that like, oh, Donald Trump won because of all these substantial policy positions. I don't I just don't buy it. I really don't. From what I've seen from lots of conservatives, what they say about Donald Trump um, w when asked, it doesn't really feel like they voted for him. For a lot of really substantive policy positions, especially when you push them on it, um, they kind of recant and then they're like, well, he says like he says the right things. He tells it how it is or something along those lines. Um, I really think he won for the most for the most part. One of the biggest reasons that he won was because people didn't like Hillary Clinton. Like that was the, one of the real reasons why he won is because they didn't because people didn't like Hillary Clinton. That's the real reason right there. And. Uh, and because of it, they either didn't show up or they voted for Donald Trump in protest. Lots of people didn't, uh, for lots of the stuff that Donald Trump said, they kind of just brushed, uh, brushed past it. Lots of people didn't even believe. If you go back to what a lot of liberals said, um, like liberals, uh, who like didn't vote or, or some like moderate Republicans who did vote for Trump and then didn't vote for him this time around, you can, let me tell you, lots of those people did not buy it when Trump said, we're going to start fucking, uh, we're going to like build a wall across the entire Southern border. We're going to, uh, ban all Muslim people, uh, from coming into the country. We're going to, um, what was it? Uh, we're going to start bombing the families of, um, uh, uh, uh of terrorists overseas. They didn't believe him. They actually didn't. I remember this vividly that they uh, that that uh, that they did not believe him. I think it's all culture war. And you can see in the latter part of his 2020 um campaign, they almost completely stopped talking about economic issues. And it, it started to talk about really really um esoteric and isolated um uh social issues um and like the culture war and cancel culture um instead of like real economic issues i don't believe it's true and it's actually really corroborated by the fact that lots of trump uh that the average amount of money someone who voted for trump makes is far greater than the average amount of money that someone who voted for joe biden makes it's just i, I just don't believe it's anything like economic anxiety that that made um these people want to vote for donald trump he's just he's the culture war president he, he brings the culture war also what's up bundle i haven't seen you in a little while aloha um, and then as far as the, the biblical substantiation for it, I mean, it's outlined, obviously, in not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, like very clearly that sexual immorality, which under the umbrella would be homosexuality is wrong. Uh, but you seem to be alluding to this idea of like the, the individual in, in their private home and things like that when you talk about you know people living in a free society to do what they want and not you know causing any problems. But what's interesting about that is that was the argument that during the, the movements in the 1960s and 70s, including the sexual revolution that allowed a lot of this stuff to have a seat at the table, which ultimately would usurp power away from traditional Americans and traditional social conservatives. And I just think that that's basically a myth because there's really no such thing as a private individual in, in the privacy of their own home because you are one person. And so any actions that you take in your house are ultimately going to reflect you and how you conduct yourself in the real world. And it's also kind of misleading because people don't want to be confided in the privacy of their own home or what have you, because that almost presupposes that it's something to be ashamed of. And people don't like that. And so... Um. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just think it's really weird to be like, ah, they have a now they have a seat at the table. This actually gives a lot of in, uh, this actually gives a lot of information in the way that these people think that other people being able to have a voice 
ultimately what that really means is that my voice means less. Not that other people get to have a say. It means I get less of a say. That's what it means. It's always about them. Now, I I get to have less of uh, less power. I get less power to make people's lives worse. I get less power to institute my my political beliefs. All of this, all of this um, it really shows they, they don't care. They just care about power. Power is what they want. They think it's tasty and they want some more. They're drinking that power. What happens is then they start taking to the streets and they start having parades and they start to infiltrate education. They start to infiltrate institutions such as the American Psychiatry Associ uh, Psychiatry Association. And then what was it? 2000. Oh my gosh! Everything, everyone's cucked. Everything is cucked and everyone's cucked. When they start saying things that I don't like, that means the gays have infiltrated and they have uh, set set down their gay seeds. The the gay the the buds of the gay seed has planted in the psychological uh psychiatric community and now everyone is cucked and i'm right especially when people who've spent their entire lives studying these certain topics they've donated their entire beings to these topics they are wrong and i am right because i am 2015 june of 2015 the supreme court decided that five minutes ago uh marriage can be between two men and now we're here on the back foot with issues like hey maybe kids shouldn't be taking prenatal hormones or uh can, can we jump in i'll get Dude, what the fuck does that mean? Dude, I'm sorry. Mar I, 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 I am so sorry, all right? Marriage in, in, the, in the form of the state, real, real marriage, okay? If you're like a Christian, real marriage has nothing to do with the state. Nothing. Zero. Nothing to do with the state. Period. When it comes to the state, religion has nothing to do with marriage. Period. It has nothing to do with it at all. Nothing, all right? Marriage is a legal contract that two people sign, and that's it. That's what it really is. That's why you don't need the ceremony. That's why you don't need to go to like a, a church to do what you don't need. Like you don't even need a venue. You just need people there. You just need someone there to certify that you two uh, consensually sign these pieces of paper. You sign the names and you walk out. I think there are people who just do that. They don't want a whole marriage and they don't need it it's because it's not, a, it's not a religious thing for them. The government doesn't do anything, doesn't do anything, nothing with religion and religion there should have nothing to do with the government so that's why two gay people can marry if how you are interpret the bible means that they can't then there, nothing's being taken away from you in that sense then all they did was sign the paperwork and the government like legally legally uh identifies them as married but if you don't think that they are capital m christian married then fine i mean you can you can say that all you want but that doesn't mean that you can now that, that you can now like try and stop them from doing the legal uh the legal marriage it's weird privatized marriage i want mcdonald's to own all marriage all mcdonald's owns 40 percent of the stocks in marriage there you go perfect Hey, I want, Elijah, yeah, I want to jump in there because Sorry. I want you like he, John just fundamentally misrepresented something I said because I specifically chose Timothy or one Timothy two verse one and two because it has nothing to do with homosexuality. That's why I specifically chose that passage. It has to do with the relationships Christians have with their government. Now, if we want to talk about how the Bible deals with homosexuality, what I would like to focus on in the fact is the fact that there are multiple different arguments for different interpretations of the Bible. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Bible scholar, but I do know that there are multiple different interpretations for that. And instead of getting into the nitty gritty about what it says in that area, I want to focus on the fact that again. This is an argument for the First Amendment, for religion to not be the, the dictator of a political movement. If you want to. Can I short sell on divorces? Yeah, but I'm going to put you in a short squeeze. That's all I know. Talk about these issues in your church. Do talk about them in your church. If you want to exclude people from your church, fine. If you want to exclude gays from getting married in your church, that is a conversation between you and your church elders. This is a conversation about a political religion. movement. I think that all the arguments against the acceptance of homosexuality within the right are completely secular. It may just so happen to appeal to the to the base of that movement as Christians, but I think that Lauren and I could uh, recite several arguments that may be even more compelling from a completely secular perspective. Let me let me. And I hope you'll do it in church. Let me jump in. And uh, no, I think it's really yeah. funny that she's quoting scripture as a liberal, <laughs> thinking that she can use it against us as Christians. Um, you know, it's like, oh, it doesn't apply to me, but maybe it'll work on you. And guess what? It doesn't work. Playing on our Christian compassion and making us be tolerant and acceptive of all this diversity. You know what that's left us with? transgender pedophiles on Twitter. Holy shit. She, every time, every single time she opens her mouth, she's, she's like taking a dig at Blair White existing. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Is this is wild to me. Blair, look, Blair, what's, what, what's with the long face, girl? You okay? <laughs> it's so sad that she identifies with a party that just constantly, consistently invalidates her existence. Saying that your daughter asked her life? Yeah, for it. your little girl isn't actually a princess. She asked for it when I abuse her. That is where. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> this is.
this is actually the 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 best part about this is that this debate hasn't even gone off the rails yet. It hasn't even gone off the rails yet. Not yet. It's not even off the rails yet. We're getting there. This is okay. All right, then. Whew, I, who's abusing their kids and who's defending people abusing their kids? Where we're at. So you're throwing scripture at me as a liberal is not going to work. You cannot play the Christian compassion card on us anymore. We are standing. We are taking a stand for social social conservatism because it matters. We're taking a stand against you by taking a stand against your own book by having by being twisterin twisterins. Okay, that's what they are. They're not Christians. They're twisterins, and this is what they do. They twist the word for their own bigotry. Is what they do. They twist twisterins. Social issues matter, and using God's word and manipulating it to try to get Christians to agree with you is absolutely subversive. And that's what we're struggling with in our party is subverters. You know how many kids saw Blair White? Yeah, honestly, this is one of the biggest things is because this is a really, really big show. Also, she's taking another dig at Blair. Holy shit. Um, uh, is that they didn't they didn't care about those values. They care about power and making people's lives worse. That's what they care about is power. So any value that they have to walk over to, to get more power is what they'll do. Be subversive. And that's what we're struggling with in our party is subverters. You know, how many kids saw Blair White, you know, giving one of her videos? You know, I know Trump is a cash cow. I know people love to talk about him to get their popularity. But how many children saw her and looked at her and said, you know what? She looks really good. I could do that, too, and started transitioning. This <laughs> what the fuck? Probably zero. Probably zero. None. Probably zero. Hey, Blair White looks at what some little, uh, little Benny opens up a Blair White video uh, dunking on the cringy TikTok transes. And he goes, huh? Look at Blair White. She's hot. I could be Blair White too. Mom, bring me the estrogen shot. And then the, uh, the, the liberal wine mom kicks open the door. I've been waiting for you to say this, honey. And, it with, and she, she pulls out from behind her a little dress and slips it on the kid and then like hits him with like a horse, like a, a horse syringe level of like estrogen and then instantly girl mode. I don't know what you're talking about. This has never happened. Also, children don't choose when they transition. It doesn't work that way. Like you have to jump through several hoops to be able to even be uh, eligible to get like um, uh, HRT. To, uh, it's not like you just be trans over. What's ha I, I, I don't get it. This is about the children. We they are coming for our kids and we are at a point now where we're going to have to take a stand. Will the party go the way of the LGBTQ? Will the party, you know, we already have a transgender Man, woman, it, I don't know. In Cali it. Oh my gosh. In it. Don't don't even give them personhood. In it, a thing, a creature. California, running the Federation for Republican Women. You know, are we going to let this stand or are we gonna choose to stay with the nuclear family and support the nuclear family? Dude, you know gay people and trans people have nuclear families too, right? Uh, but okay, I guess. Because from what I've seen from these LGBTQ activists, such as R Richard Grinnell, who's an absolute pervert, he refuses to stand pervert. up for What's transgenders happening? in the military against transgender. This 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 woman actually believes in Q. Wait, also, doesn't she look exactly like um, Marjorie Taylor Greene? She looks exact. I don't know. It's something with these like suburban uh, blonde blonde moms. They, they there's always there's something wrong going on. All right, there's something wrong going on. No, she doesn't. She does. Don't worry about it, cat. She does. You're being racist. It's not true. I think she looks like her. Like 15% of people in Gen Z are trans now. What? Isn't it like 2%? As a fellow blonde uh, white woman, I am offended. Oh my. You're blonde? I thought you're brunette. Okay. I do not look like these clowns. I don't. Obviously, you don't, Cat. Ah, uh, you would never look like them. in the military, he refuses to stand and make a public statement that hey, men shouldn't be in women's bathrooms. That's because they're bought, sold, and paid for by these by LGBT the global donors who have. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, I, the, I I didn't know the big trans had uh, had such deep pockets. My goodness. They, they're bought and paid for by the global. I've seen an opportunity. Trump was a cash cow. He was. If you talk about him, and if you are. Um, you know, had a different look or whatever, people would throw themselves at you because it's like, oh, look how inclusive we are, but we're sacrificing everything. And when it comes down to everything. it, I choose the life, preserving the life of little children who are 15% of them are growing up identifying as LGBTQ 
um, and transgender. Uh, oh, it's fifteen percent of them. I okay, so that so that's where that thing came from. So it's like fifteen percent identify as LGBTQ, which means like lesbian, gay, bi, trans, uh, trans. Um, which also trans doesn't mean you're binary trans. Trans could be non-binary as well. So you could still be, you could still look or uh, dress exactly the same, but identify, but, but go by like they, them, or not, not even go by they, them, just like identify as LG as, um, non-binary, but okay. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she thinks like she'll walk into like an, uh, a high school classroom and then 15% of the kids in there are going to be trans or something. And like like look like Blair White. I don't know. They all look like oh, they all look exactly like Blair White. Okay, they dye their hair. They they get the the, the lip injections and everything. Um, they look exactly like Blair White. Just carbon copies. Just clones. And we should not be giving a spotlight to or a platform to people who operate in a lifestyle where forty percent of them end up attempting suicide. Oh you know no! This is like the trans thirteen fifty. Oh my gosh. Actually, uh, you know, one in four children growing up struggling with LGBTQ gender dysphoria end up with depression, drug abuse. I think yeah. it's 80% of men have a higher risk of HIV. You know, why would I support that lifestyle? Um, oh my gosh. You're one of the people making that worse. You know, the, see, the thing is that like trans people who, who get accepted, right? And then have families who don't kick them out for coming out as trans, their suicide attempt rate, all right? Their suicide attempt rate is right in line with cis kids so it's, so it's almost like instead of the trans people being the problem it's society it's um hmm, interesting that why would i, I even fast. make excuses for that I wanna, lifestyle I blair, or try to use I blair, blair to respond to respond table. to your statements real fast because i know blair has, has a hard out uh, we haven't heard from blair just on the on the statement of lauren said lauren is talking about you know the subversion in the party the idea that you're that your choice well, is I, transitioning well, before i um you know I just want to specifically address um What's what Lauren happening? said about children maybe watching my YouTube videos and thinking that they can be like me or transition or whatever. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet. It's what I'm, right. almost, I, it's, well, I, I, I let you, you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. That is the best thing that you can do to help us. Oh, that's where that came from. Holy, this is just, this is just straight hatred. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no dude wow so that's where that came from it's just that is that's nasty that is real nasty and look at it and look at all of them look at all of them like uh, just giving a little smirk there, smiling this is funny it's all funny to them because christ you are not love living. christ love walking off lauren like you that is the best thing that you can do to help us because christ you are not love living. christ love walk <sighs> Did, did she say, I'm not sure if she said at the end, you are not a woman or you are not winning. She said something. Not to live like you. That is the best thing that you can do to help us. Because Christ you are not love, winning. Christ love. What? I think she said, I think she said at the end, you are not a, uh, you are not a woman. Damn. And look at Blair's face. Imagine being as cuck. All right, guys, if you ever feel cucked, if you ever feel down bad, all right, if I have any uh, people in here and you shoot your shot on Tinder and they call you like ugly or whatever, all right, just know that you'll never be as down bad as uh as blair here to sit here and try and play nice with people who are actually invalidating her her mere existence this is this is actually really bad why am i supporting carlene right now <laughs> this the bar is so low because this this woman has set the bar so low at just like out just like outright hatred that like anybody who even comes above that is now like woo yeah you know just <laughs> my gosh we are not winning. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe it was. We are not winning. It's one of the two. Doyle. Walking off, Lauren. Christ love. Go at it, guys. <laughs> I think actually okay. to close on the biblical point. Shrug. Um, I, like, the first I thing I did want to say is the vindication of Lauren's voice comes very clearly in the fact that we have a liberal on here who is personally a liberal and ideologically a liberal, though feels as though she can manifest that by voting for Republicans. And so I think that really speaks to how far our party has deviated in the last 50 years to where now there are people who are personally liberal who feel as though their views can be. Are you saying that Blair lets Lauren fuck her husband? Does Blair White have a husband? I mean, if so, may, um, instead of like uh, Blair would let Lauren fuck her husband, I'm pretty sure Blair would let Lauren uh, sit uh, sit on the couch with uh, her husband um, while while she sits across the room 
uh, on another chair. Well, her and well, uh, uh, Lauren and her husband joke about how disgusting trans people are, and she and she sits there and smiles and giggles. Selected by voting for Republicans. And to close on the biblical topic, there's this misconception that like Jesus just said that we should be like vaguely nice to each other. As far as judgment goes, we are called as Christians not to judge people individually. Like we cannot look at you and make a moral declaration like you are good or you are bad. That's not our position. However, we are called quite explicitly to judge the actions of people so as to maintain a moral and civilized society. And so we need to keep that social pressure on people like you actually can't behave in this way or that way. And that's how we maintain a civilized and virtuous society. And we are called throughout the Bible to do that quite explicitly. Okay, Blair, can you please respond? All right, well, I never finished my point, so I would just like to say, as I said earlier, whether anyone on this panel likes it or wants to acknowledge it, there is a really huge chunk of LGBT people who are very much against ideas like children transitioning, like uh, trans women in. Dude, children. See, the thing is, children are not transitioning. There is no there. there I, as far as I know, there's no like massive like avalanche of children transitioning. Some children are put on hormone blockers before they go through puberty because the puberty is supposed uh the, the hormone blockers are supposed to stop the puberty blockers are supposed to stop puberty so they get it before puberty because they can't take puberty blockers after puberty because then they would have gone through puberty so what are the puberty blockers stopping so they have to get on the puberty blockers before then so but that's not transitioning that's a different thing entirely because you can stop taking the puberty blockers and then you'll your your pu your puberty won't be blocked anymore. It's really crazy how it works, you know. Man, it's almost like it's in the name. <laughs> Biological women's sports, um, and all of the ideas that are the bio. May she even subscribes to bio women? Oof. You know, hot talking points, but they're very real at the same time. So, um, I don't think many kids would look at my YouTube videos and want to do anything like me because I explicitly have been very known for saying that it's not a glamorous lifestyle, that it's difficult, and that children shouldn't be out allowed. To trans lifestyle dude what why is she buying into the fucking like lgbt lifestyle thing i okay transition because it can often be a mistake that really damages their life so i don't know i just felt like that was a false premise and again i i would like to agree with carlin it, on wasn't, that. I, it I, wasn't a false premise like i said if you want to help us tell people I not to live like you say that people would watch my videos and come to that conclusion when i say not to and i advocate against it i think that there are a lot of trans people online that you could argue maybe someone looks at their videos just so you know blair what blair's trying to do is find the middle ground for her there is no middle ground it's either you exist and you're a horrible force in the world who's like pushing pedophilia or you don't exist and you're a good person it's like there's no there's no in between there you don't find middle ground with people like this she does not want blair white to exist she said she said so herself grow out grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you children and, and wants to do a certain thing but i'm very much against it if anything people who support children transitioning or kids who want to transition hate me so um, but I also would like to say, it's normal. I do agree That's normal. That's not, with Carlin, I do agree with Carlin in the sense um, that, you know, if you guys do want to wield power. Dude, Lauren's giving big like um, uh, Walmart, uh, Walmart return, uh, return desk vibes for me. I don't know. In an act, I don't like it. Conservative changes that you want. You do have to win elections and telling people that they don't have a place to vote in your direction or that they don't have a place in your party isn't the way to win elections. So. I guess if the topic is the future of the right, I think the future of the right's already settled. Um, it's Trump and that's yeah, this not is an not ideology that tells people they're not allowed to come over. If anything, it's an ideology that welcomes people to come over. So okay, it's so kind of already over actually. So. Before we jump any further, I wanna let you guys know something. It's very important. As you can see, a lot of people in this country disagree right now. We cannot seem to come to common ground on a lot of things, which Wait, is why is this an ad? see the instability of in the stock market. We had things like the power grid fail here in Texas, which is why I wanna tell you about my Patriot supply, which you can find- Holy crap. No way, he's doing it. Wait. No, it is. I, I was right. It was just a little delayed. He's actually doing the the uh, the goo bucket. He's actually selling the goo bucket. With Elijah .com. You know, right now, no matter what he's doing it. Regard and hey, there it is. It's the goo bucket. Hey, get all your favorite goo products all in one bag. <laughs> goo rice, goo oatmeal, goo pancakes, goo macaroni, macaroni and goo, goo milk. You can do all of it all in one bag. You can. They, these people actually think that they're fucking Willy Wonka. That they can get give you uh they can give you a bag of powder and you you boil it over the stove and you can get a whole three course meal over it. What do they have like Thanksgiving dinner in here too? Like holy crap, dude! What do you think that you're doing? All this tastes like garbage. I hope you know that.
It's the slop bucket. Hey, listen, um, uh, Joe. We all know Joe Biden could fall asleep at the helm at any point in time, and his uh, and his limp body could roll over on the uh, fire nukes right into conservative homeland, uh, uh, right into the uh, conservative homeland button. So uh, make sure you get your home style potato soup, mac and cheese, hearty. Like, what does it say? Hearty meal. Like breakfast meal or something. Uh, uh, stockpile your three-month food supply in your doomsday prepper bunker today. Please get a personal. Yeah, canned food. Bitch, canned foods already exist. We already have. We already have this. Oh, it's called cans. They want to go even uh, uh, environmentally worse and put and replace cans with bags. Okay. We're skipping over this anytime. Ooh, limited time, special savings. My Patriot supply. Is this like a is this like BLM? This is BLM actively destroying all of New York City. Just so you know, New York City does not exist anymore. BLM destroyed it. Um, uh, it 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 is gone. It is just it's just a leveled it's just leveled concrete. Okay, it is no longer a city. Um, and this is why you need to buy my Patriot supply. We're talking something. about the future of the right right now. We're losing. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future. But if you go to prepare with Elijah, Do holy fuck, do they think they're gonna be like persecuted? Do you think they're gonna be like? Uh, conservative crucifixions like like uh, all down i-65 there's just going to be like uh, conservative people hanging on crosses all down the road and he he and and and, and, and like above them on the cross would be like transgen uh, uh misgendered um uh didn't believe in cancel culture uh, uh, uh did, did not believe that black people are like superior beings from uh from from like a, a planet far far away like fucking up um uh like uh like a planet Vegeta or something, you know, just, I don't know. Dot com today and get your emergency. Food. Yeah, Tacoma so West. Quickly did. and discreetly to your door so people don't know that you're, I don't know, awesome prepper and you actually prepare for real world scenarios. Don't be wrong to get your distraction. That okay, coalition sit. John wanted to respond to that. Yeah, I was just going to say that as we talked about earlier with where the people who voted for Trump, that coalition sit on the political spectrum. Trump may or may not have touched Wait, it. Wait, do you as guys think that? I don't believe Blair is drinking that water. All right. Here's my, here's my conspiracy theory. All right. Wait a second. I don't believe Blair is drinking. Look at the water when she's drinking it. Okay, look at this. About earlier with where the people who voted it does not go down sit on the political spectrum. She's not drinking that water. She's lying. She's a lying dog faced pony soldier. Okay, she's not actually drinking that water. Anyways, sorry, Doyle. Trump may or may not have touched on this issue either to either side very much, but they still fundamentally sit at the center economically and authoritatively socially. And so if you look at where those people poll on issues pertaining to you know LGBT issues, uh, they're all basically socially conservative. And so maybe Trump didn't come out and support those or, or be as against those as he should have been to really like wheel those people in. But basically, it's ambivalent as far as that's concerned. And so what we do know is that Trump taking time to address those issues, thinking he's going to win those people over, hasn't actually worked. I mean, even his support in 2016 or 2020 with LGBT people was not like statistically significant, nor was there a statistic improvement or statistically significant improvement. And so when any political operation is happening, you know, you have a certain volume of discussion and resources that you can expend on different things. And so if you're going to waste those resources, which it is a waste on people who aren't going to vote for you anyway, because they've basically been brainwashed into hating you because we don't control the narratives and we don't control the institutions. Uh, we're not brainwashed into hating you. We just want to make sure that you t that we can take away every single last right that you have so you can know your place at the bottom rung of society as the degenerate, disgusting person that you are. Hey, wait, they were just, they're just brainwashed into hating you though. Um, uh, but you have no point that you have no place in our party and you are destroying traditional marriage and you and your ideology must be destroyed. Hey, listen, but they're brainwashed to hate you though. What is this? Is that's not brainwashed. You actually explained why they don't want to vote for you right there. The, okay. the place that you want to be pouring those resources into would be on the issues that you won the election based on in the first place, which would be immigration, which would be free trade, and which would be foreign policy. It has very little to do with appealing to different uh, interest groups and hoping that they come over, whether that's you know black people or gay people or transgender people. These are all things that Jared Kushner lobbied for because he thought that they would be effective in creating the sort of big tent movement, which I, I mean obviously didn't help him too too much throughout the administration. But uh, that also wasn't why he was elected in the first place, anyways. Because if you look, even demographically, the people who are most likely to vote for Trump are also most likely to be socially conservative. So it's very clear that if we want to keep Trumpism going, if we want to keep the Trump wait, the people who are most likely to vote for a Republican. Are Republicans who could have seen train this coming. going and the way to do that isn't by appealing to these issues it's by appealing to the issues that got him into power in the first place and then when we take the country back then you know we can have these other debates once we actually wield power but right now we're just getting totally crushed so we don't have time to waste resources on anything that hasn't been proven to be effective Carlin can I talk uh, Blair Blair has her hand up Blair has talked less I was just gonna say I actually completely agree with uh, John that pandering to minority groups definitely didn't do Trump any favors I think that the media completely controls the narratives it doesn't matter he could save like I don't know, a little person of color who's also trans out of a burning building and the media would not care. Um, but that's all. Do what?
Dude, I, I, I don't get it. Because these people are going to pretend like Donald Trump did so much for like LGBTQ people when he just didn't. He just did not. Please provide me with all of the amazing... Uh, amazing things that a uh, uh, Donald Trump, like fucking All Might, jumped from uh, jumped from the uh, the Rose Garden um, and, and in one massive stride, uh, crashed through the the ceiling. It, it like in Detroit, uh, 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 like of like a burning apartment complex, and he crashed through the ceiling, and then he got up, like trans woman, and then busted out of the window and set her down, and was like, "You are safe now with me." And then he pulled out of his back pocket, like dusted it off and put like a little Trump hat on her head and then stay safe, citizen. We, uh, we you are a valued American and then left. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. And if it did, I'm pretty sure they uh, like at least some people would cover it. All the more reason to I don't think you have to pander. I think you just don't have to try to exclude people. I think that that just loses votes. Um, and so, again, it just goes back to you. That's actually kind of true is that like these people they could they don't have to like really hardcore pander to these sorts of people They can just not make their place uh, Their community so incredibly toxic against them um, And that would be okay like okay like these lots of these people aren't even looking for especially like LGBTQ like Republicans They're not even looking to be like super like super duper uh, accepted. They just don't want to be hated Right. Why would they want to be a part of a group of people that hate literally hate them? Um, so if that's the case then yeah, they, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't want to vote there. You guys can't wield any of this power you say you want to wield if you're not going to win elections. You're just not. And um, I don't know. I just think it's it's just kind of silly to go on about this argument that certain people need to be excluded because all it's doing is telling people not to vote for you. I and actually if, agree with that. If, if it keeps going back to like, we need to win, we need to win, saying you can't vote for us or you don't have a place in the party isn't, I don't see the winning tactic of that. I mean, I don't think that the social conservative movement is going to necessarily grow stronger to the point where you wouldn't need and also what you said about um lgbt votes not having a statistical raise i believe they did double obviously it's still a small community but they did, it did double from 2016 so clearly there is a shift happening i think it was 14 percent in 2016 and probably like one percent every other election before that and it was like 28 percent in 2020 so yeah you know minority groups don't necessarily win elections now over time they very well could can I just uh, leave, leave, leave it to Lauren? 900,000 votes. Yeah. 900,000 mm -hmm. people nationally came out uh, from the LGBTQ community and voted for President Trump. We've done the math. Um, it was absolutely um, not beneficial for all the money we spent. When we dude, what the fuck? <laughs> your brain on your brain on not understanding politics. Um, Here. 900,000 votes nationally may not sound that much. That's a decent amount of people. When you have states being decided by, like Georgia, 9,000 votes, having 5,000 people in Georgia that would vote for you that, uh, that, uh, that wouldn't before, is pretty beneficial to actually winning. Now, isn't it? 900,000 people doesn't sound like a lot. Activating 900,000 people in extremely close elections is a lot because as the election gets closer every single last person's vote starts to matter more and more and more and in places like arizona in georgia in wisconsin in pennsylvania lots of these states that were uh, decided ex by extremely close margins um yeah nine hundred thousand votes across the country starts to actually add up so even even here she's invalidating these people vote i don't know hey listen just hey nine if nine hundred thousand isn't enough then make sure you, you you turn that number to zero, okay? Just turn it to turn it to zero. They won't miss you. We could it's have been okay. going after the zero. working class, the white working class, the Christian working class. Ah, uh, the white working man they, they took that mask right off. Went to, run from working class to white working class. Okay. Uh, the I do agree. Religiously, uh, yeah, we spent way too many resources. Um, so the lie that we have to be a big tent in order to win, and we have to be uh inclusive you know like i said there is a party for free market we spent way too many resources being nice to gay people we have to stop capitalism <laughs> and transgenderism and liberalism that's called the libertarian party why don't you join them we do not need you you are doing nothing but hurting us you are hurting the christian vote by creating a platform for yourself saying you know what i agree i 100 agree okay if you don't believe 100 of the things that this lady is saying i will and and, and, and you don't want to vote for the democrats or like a and like any other further left party, then please, please, I beg of you, I will, I will personally finance 
your uh, your bus your bus ticket or gas money you need to go to register as a, a libertarian and only vote for the libertarians. Please, I promise you, do it, do it. It'd be so amazing. Please, go ahead. Go on, go on. Don't be shy. Ooh, get your friend, get all your conservative buddies to go uh, register as libertarians too. Ah, that'll now really show them. That'll stick it to them now, won't it? Yeah. And this is Trump Trumpism. This is Trumpism. You know, we should have never glorified this in the first place. While we are losing everything on social issues, we lose every single time. You know, we are influencing. You know, public opinion matters, and we are influencing our own elected officials to not take a stand on issues such as transgenderism, uh, LGBTQ education, drag queen story hour. They are saying nothing. We have created a cowardly. Uh, yeah, all this shit means literally nothing. Ah, uh, our our politic. Imagine unironically being like in in in, in like a, a national pandemic, as like the wealth uh, disparity gap grows, uh, as more people find it hard to even put food on the table. While all of these things are going, climate change, right? While all of these things are going on, she's unironically sitting here like our our politicians aren't taking a stand on trans on on, on trans story hour, dude. What a loser can you be? My gosh, drag queen story hour. Oh no, anything but this. But yeah, that's the real. That's the real um uh horrible thing going on in our society right now. Yeah, definitely. A elected class within our party, you know. So it is not helping us. There is absolutely no electoral benefit. There's no social benefit. Um, you know. And if, you, like I said, if you are a gunslinging, freedom loving person, absolutely, we'd love to have you come vote for us. But should you be? Wait, I'm a gun. I, well, I want to be a gunslinging, and I am a freedom-loving person, and that's why I don't want to vote for the uh, Republicans. Mostly, mostly, be, um, mostly because of the freedom thing. Um, but yeah, listen, I'm a gun. I'm a gun-toting, God-fearing American. That's what I love to be. That's why I am. All right, gun, gun-toting, God-fearing American. I love, I love those things. All three of them. I love them. And uh, uh, to continue that, I think I don't want to vote for Republicans. That's just me personally having a say in influencing the party. Should you have um, an opinion uh, that, you know, like Jared Kushner was the one who did push the LGBTQ agenda, mass migration. Um, and those were the things that, you know, mass migration was something that Trump addressed in 2016. That's what got the white working class out to vote for him. You know, Blair looks so done. I feel kind of bad for her. Jennifer. Were you around when like the uh, when like the worst things are being uh, thrown about Blair? Holy Blair. I've never actually seen Blair take this much abuse. Even Ben Shapiro, when uh, Blair was debating like um uh like like uh, being being trans and like the uh the 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 like importance of uh, pronouns and whatever. Even in that debate that Blair had with uh Ben, Ben was even at the very least Ben was like, I will use your preferred pronouns in private. Like, at the very least, um, uh, he would say that this person is like, whew. wait, what are we at right now? Someone write this down quick. Someone write this down. 3526. Quick. Someone write this down. 3526. Please say someone write this down. 3526. Okay. Wait, listen to this. Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being Carlin. Carlin. He's no, a legal alien. Alien. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet. It's what I'm, right. I, it's what well, I, I, I like to be. The best thing you can do for us is grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. So yeah, um, that is um, that yeah, there it is right there. Be beautiful thing. Stop, Bluebird. Quit. You're a bully. You know that. Shark, pog. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, Aphrodite. Thank you so much for the follow, for joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pog. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, like so. If you're ever wondering why Blair looks like this, okay. If if you're one, if you're thinking to yourself, man, I wonder why Blair looks like this, is because Blair took that level of abuse, and the the one of the worst things about it is that Blair didn't even fight back. She didn't. She just rolled over. This lady is literally like she punched Blair in the face. All right. And Blair fell over and she's now stomping on her. And Blair's just like, well, I think it's important to make a party that's inclusive to other people. Like, holy my gosh. My goodness. Hey, Jennifer uh, Convertibles. Thank you so much for the fo for the subscription. Big subscription. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Hey, listen, you now have access to some of the best emotes on Twitch, especially Shark High and Shark Love. Whew. Beautiful. And also Boo. You get to you get to have Boo. My goodness. People love Boo. Isn't he a good boy? He's behind us right now. Yeah, look at him. Look at that boy. He's a good boy. Trump addressed in 2016. That's what got the white working class out to vote for him. You know, so there are plenty of votes out there 
for us to get, but it doesn't come with compromising. We don't get those 15 million unregistered Christian voters to get, re- get them registered to vote and out to vote for us by glorifying the LGBT community. Congress jumped. <laughs> Glorify. She's not even asking to be glorified. She's just asking to not be hated. That's it. They just don't want to be hated. That's it. That's all they want. It, uh, this fight, mind you, this entire fight is predicated on Blair White basically being like, hey, guys, can you stop trying to, like, say mean things about me? Just at the very least do that. And they're like, no. Make no law respecting an establishment of religion. I don't know why Lauren's so against the First Amendment. I think the First Amendment's pretty great. I also think the Second Amendment's pretty Oh, I mean, like Carlene, I, she's she's been she's been throwing some decent points. I'm not even gonna lie. Carlene has probably had the best points um, in in this entire argument out of anyone, which is unfortunate still. But yeah, great too because it protects the first. <laughs> and these are the things that we should actually be conserving, and we can't do that if we can't win. What's Doyle laughing fact about? The matter is, Lauren, that every single problem you Don't have with the LGBT oh. movement right now, from from giving hormones to kids, medical transition, whatever. Oh my gosh, high school. You're literal high school? You are the high school? Hey, thanks so much for the follow, for joining the frenzy, and being so incredibly pog. Yeah, we all know uh, why she hates the Bill of Rights. Yeah. This was all caused by the right... Look at her face. Oh my gosh, she's such a hateful person. Look at her go, dude. What an awful human being. She sees someone being like, hey guys, we should we should make sure that we should respect other human beings. And this is the face she makes. Holy shit, it's like the little uh, like 16 year old uh, like Burger King worker tells her that they ran out of ketchup and she's like, what do you mean you don't have ketchup? I want ketchup. Give me the ketchup. Like, ma'am, I'm sorry. We actually, we don't have any ketchup in the building. How do you open the store without any ketchup? Like. <laughs> hate emote this is like a real this is a big cringe emote right here i mean we already have one of doyle this is a <laughs> this is a good this is a good uh this is a good email right here but um but yeah some, some real <laughs> that face <laughs> doyle when people start talking about uh why we shouldn't hang gay people mm. Mm. thinking mm losing the culture war 30 years ago when they tried to legislate their religion. That is why we're currently experiencing this today. The only way to come back and conserve whatever it is you want to conserve is by winning elections. And the fact of the matter is, it's not just people like Blair who vote based on LGBT issues. I am straight as an arrow. I'm married to a dude. Between the two of us, I'm the one that's actually married with the family. And so I will say that I absolutely will not vote for a party that treats LGBT people like they are subhuman. I won't do it. Part of the reason that Trump won my vote is because he does. No, Carlene, listen, they're not saying that they're subhuman. They're saying they're barely human. Come on, let's not let's not misrepresent what they're what they believe. Come on, right, guys? There's a there's a big difference. They've really come a long way. Not care. He promotes people. He doesn't promote sexualities. Uh-huh. Yeah, Carlene has a spine. It is wild. Carlene does have a spine. It, it's there. You know, it, it's like um, uh, it's it's like um, you know, it, it's on one day, it's off another day. But you know, it it it, it has its moments. Um, but yeah, she she it's there. It does something sometimes. Uh, okay, so first of all, you're using issues again on me that you don't apply for yourself. So uh, Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being Carlin. From Twin- Carlin. banned from Twitter. Um, she was so excited to see that my voice had been silenced. So freedom of speech for thee, but not for me. Um, absolutely. So, you know. That's not your freedom of speech, dog. The government, that's not what freedom of speech means. You, tw- Twitter, um, I, I still don't get it. It's like, um, it's like you step onto someone's lawn to start yelling about someone and someone shoes you off of their lawn and you're like, my freedom of speech has been taken from me. No, you can, you're right, you're right here right now. Look at your freedom of speech. I wish I was canceled the same way these people were being exposed to like hundreds of thousands and millions of views 24 seven, man, I wish. Disregard that opinion. Um, well, I celebrated so, that you were banned on Twitter I, I, because I, you repeatedly I, I, tweeted I that my husband should be deported, Lauren. And he's now, a legal I'm alien. Thrilled. No, he's your not. Husband, he has a permanent green card. I am now one. thrilled that I don't have to hear you. Wait, does she say that doesn't matter? Wait, she keeps going. Wait, she's trying to get her husband deported. Holy crap. Wait, has this lady been like, is that why she got banned from uh, from Twitter? She's like calling. She's like spending every waking moment like calling ICE. She like bought several disposable phones, all with, uh, typing ICE uh, ICE's number into them twenty four seven to try to report uh, Caroline Borsenko's husband to try and get him deported. Holy crap! Really? Is that why she's like constantly adding Borse like Mister Borsenko to try to get him deported from the country? 
<laughs> Holy crap. You call for my husband to be deported on Twitter, who has had a permanent green card for the last six years. He came into our country illegally. He broke our laws. He did and not do And married an American. How lucky is he? Back. He has to go back. I'm sorry, no, he Dr. doesn't, Carl. honey. That's not how laws... Oh, my... He has... He has to go back. Sorry, honey. <laughs> you can get out of my country, you filthy illegal. <laughs> <laughs> he has to go back, honey. <laughs> what an awful garbage human being. Oh my gosh. Uh, hey, Sifles, thanks so much for the follow, for joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pop. The girls are fighting. <laughs> it's not how laws work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have a husband and you don't learn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I Uh, the boy, do I love the concern. Ah, uh, the conservative tea. Mm, never felt it. Never felt so good. What a great brew we have today. Mm, you, just, someone did something right. Uh, the, uh, the the leaves are really picked. Uh, picked fresh this time. <laughs> Doesn't have a husband. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. So, you know what? She's like. Hm, sorry, I could find a man. Maybe you won't. You, you can't find one with that one. With that attitude, bitch. Look at that angry, seething smile. Look, look at those soulless, lifeless eyes. Uh, and that's this is the ooh. This is like the peak. This is the peak, like evil, evil suburban mom smile. You know what I'm saying? This is it. That's it right there. Blair, Blair. She burned her tongue on the tea. Doyle, Doyle is just like the Doyle's like the kid. He, he he's like in the divorce he's over with it instead of like while his parents are yelling about the divorce instead of thinking about how sad it is his family's breaking up he's like damn bitch i get two birthdays two i get two birthdays two uh christmas uh two christmases double the presents holy shit he's mm. you're welcome anybody, anyone want to respond you guys can keep going i'm keep going what a great moderator keep going thanks for the ads uh, thanks for the revenue keep going <laughs> Blair's like, I'm oh, you want me to keep going? Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm in early recovery. So, you know, I've only been clean three years. Uh, you know, myself getting in toxic relationships is what kept, you know, me relapsing. So, you know, I'm just doing it with wisdom this time. I'm dating. Wait, you're telling me the worst type of woman has the worst type in men? Whew, who could have seen that coming? Also, we don't make fun of addiction here. So I'm not going to make a joke about any addiction. I'm, but my intention is to get married and have children eventually. But I certainly will not be marrying an illegal alien uh, to give him his green card. So, you know, uh. I hopefully will find an American man. I will find an American man. Oh, I find an American man. And you know what American means? White. Okay. If that guy came into the country legally, you think that she, you think that she would be, uh, uh, would be like, oh, you're great now. Oh, that's amazing. She'd be actively like spitting on, a, uh, uh, on like a perceived Mexican guy. He's not even Mexican. He's from El Salvador. Right. And she's like at, spitting on him. She's like running at her mouth is getting dry, running out of saliva. Just, just like hawking loogies on this guy. And then he's like, wait, no, look, I've been, this, I, I, I was born in America. And she'd be like, oh, ah, that makes it all better. No, <laughs> this is like, don't, don't fall for these games. This, this does not work. She, she is lying to you to, uh, to think that, uh, oh, no, because he was born in America. Now that makes him better. Nah, dude, he's brown. Okay. She, she, uh, this dude, if, if she's, if this dude is darker than the toast that she barely, uh, like throw, she, she doesn't even make toast. Okay. She throws in the fucking microwave and it gets a little soggy and she's like, mm, yeah, toast, you know, if it's darker than that, if that dude's darker than that, she's, he's out of there, out of there interviews with ice and they 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 blessed our marriage really even though he was an illegal and didn't come the right way holy shit she is she's actually trying to get her uh her husband deported holy crap <laughs> oh man you know, like we can keep talking about my husband all she wants to talk about it but the fact of the matter is my husband ain't gonna win us an election votes are going to win us elections i don't know why we're so focused on these issues that are driving people away from voting for things like conserving the first amendment conserving the second amendment that's really what i would like to have the conversation you don't even like the first amendment you don't even like it she probably says it like that to, en to uh, emphasize the illegal because before you're anything, you're illegal. All right. You're this thing. You're a thing. And what's added on to it is the humanity there. Added on to it is the personhood. Right. The first thing that you, you want to stick with you is illegal. E illegal is what you are. You are you are an illegal. You're not even an illegal like person. You are an illegal is what you are. Illegal. Want to emphasize, drag it out in your mind.
Um, she may not even know that she's doing it, but when people, but what she, what she means is um, when when people do stuff like that, they can pick up on their like vocal patterns a little bit. What's important to her there is the illegal part, being illegal. So why are you why are you uh, Blair went to let's, when let's you don't. Yeah, illegal. B bitch is talking about illegal. All I want to talk about is e-boys and e-girls, all right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut you guys off. I'm gonna like Claire. I, I, I want to eat Claire. I, I got to cut you guys off. Um, We have another sponsor. Claire, what are you going to say? Uh -huh. Oh, I was just going to say, um, I think that there's a little bit of a tit for tat here, but I will say, Lauren, um, you said that Carlin was celebrating you being the platform. I did see that, and I personally disagree with Carlin. Thank you. Okay. I taught myself all of my sociology. I am uh, now a so sociology major. Um, no, I don't have a degree. Um, and it is actually racist for you to say, for you to ask for one. So, um, hello, Joe Biden. Yep. They just didn't, uh, they just did a racism. Hmm? Yep. You can pick up. Oh, Guant oh, they already have a cell ready in Guantanamo. That's great. Well, I'll see you later. I'm for doing that. I didn't, I don't like people being banned off Twitter, these platforms. Um, but I will say you open this up with saying that I shouldn't be given a platform and that I shouldn't have a say in the party or and you know so i think there's a little bit of it to go around i think everyone should probably just respect each other a little more no i didn't oh yeah also if you're like catching us now earlier in earlier in the debate uh uh um this lady up here lauren what she said uh was uh uh, what she said was, we have a transgender on the panel and we shouldn't be giving platforms to transgenders because they're um, because being transgender is a gateway drug to pedophilia. Like, that's actually something that she said. You can if you haven't seen it, you can catch it when we upload the video. But whew, baby, I say you should be deplatformed from your voice. I was saying that you should not have a platform within a party who stands for traditional. We give the dog a treat. You know what? I will give the dog a treat. Here, okay? Give me one second. I have to run upstairs and I have to go get some new treats because I do owe him actually two treats. So we're taking a quick pause. Give me 30 seconds and I'll be back, all right? Here, you can have some fun with some chill wave while I'm gone. There you go. Good. I'm proud of you, okay? All right, with that being said, with that being said, it's time to dive back into cringe. All right. Hey, Victoria Valkyrie. Thank you so much for the follow, for joining the frenzy, and being so incredibly pog. I appreciate you. Let's get back into it. ...marriage, because that is just opposing itself. You know, it makes no sense. Also, when you cannot deny that your people are the ones that are reading... Can, okay, just don't, shh, just don't mention it. ...to kids at my, our taxpayers' expense. And I'm just curious, to what extent am I forced, am I going to be forced to participate in your fetish or delusion? Well fetish? Holy shit. My gosh. I was saying that you should not have a platform within a party who stands for traditional marriage because that is just opposing itself. You know, it makes no sense. Also, when you cannot deny that your people are the ones that are reading dressed in drag to kids at my, our taxpayers' expense. Your people? So I'm not sure if she's talking about when she says your people, I'm not sure if she's referring to like LGBT people in general or trans people because drag is not trans but she probably she does but i highly doubt she knows that and she probably doesn't care curious to what extent am i forced am i going to be forced to participate in your fetish or delusion while our children are being targeted for pedophilia openly you know so you know who who you know who who hello are you there the, the child targeters you know what here here's one thing um wait a second uh You want to talk about like targeting children. All right. You want to talk about targeting children real quick. How about freaking this? All right. How about this former Trump aide? Cause this never became a segment on, uh, on the channel or anything. I was thinking about redoing it, but like, you know, CW child, child abuse. All right. CP, CW, CP. All right. This dude, this dude here pictured at the white house. All right who not only worked for the Trump administration, worked for the March for Life. This dude was arrested by the FBI for possessing and trying to, so, possessing, soliciting um, CP of babies. Babies. Not, not like children, babies. I think he said literally in here, like, babies are my favorite. It's, it's actually... Yeah, here.
The court documents detailed a very disturbing chat that he's had on the site where he told the author that babies were his absolute favorite. This guy, this guy here, who spent a whole lot of time at the White House. Um, yeah, he, uh, oh yeah, also this is him speaking at the Mar March for Life. Hmm. Really interesting the type of people you you keep around in the pro-life movement and like the little receipt because they say his name at the beginning. Give him a warm March for Life welcome. Roman! Yep, that's it. Yep, it's him. Hey, you re really got some really great people who really care about children in, uh, in your movement, don't you? Yeah, and you're right. He's not the only one. Extremely not based. Actually, it's really hard for me to think of something that's less based. No, I don't want to give a platform to that lifestyle. Here's and those the, are your people. Here's the platform, thing. There platformer. is... Go ahead, Blair, sorry. Okay, there is... And I think this may be something that you might not be aware of or people who are not, you know, closer to the LGBT community and knowing the inner workings, that there's actually a huge divide from people who... It doesn't so, matter. It's a package well, deal. It all comes together. Mm, I disagree. I think that... Uh, there's a huge divide within the community as from people who do support things like Drag Queen Story Hour, one of the things I've been very vocal against, um, against children transitioning. So I don't think it's a monolith. Dude, nobody's, nobody's pushing for children. <sighs> like, she's hurting her own points here. She's like, oh, yeah, they're, they're like all of these people pushing for children transitioning, which isn't a position that people hold. And then there's people like me. And that's and that's why, you know, there's there's some good one. of you're, She's hurting her own point. She's been so transphobic for so long. She doesn't even know the good points to help herself. She, I, she actually doesn't know. I highly doubt she knows. So she's even hurting her own points here. I don't think any group is a monolith. The same way that people, the right wing is not a monolith of just people who believe, you know, in a biblical, you know, definition of conservatism and people who don't. Um, and I think that there's a really big missed opportunity for the right in the sense that I think LGBT people are actually the best warriors against gender ideology. And you know, and seeing and seeing children being read to by half naked drag queens and and children going under hormone therapy at twelve, Gen I think that people who are from that community, the LGBT people are going. I, I promise you, if you just pick more of us, then we 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 can really show you how we work against these uh, these bad people in our community. Come on, uh, stop hating me, please. The, we we have so much in mind. Like okay, Be it's not going to work, right? Blair may think this may work, right? At least for some people, it's not going to work. People like her cannot be won over by this because it's an all or nothing in her head. You cannot be picked because at the at the end of the day, you will never be enough because your mere demographic position means that you are out of the bounds of uh, moral consideration. It will never be enough because be uh, because being enough would means you have to fundamentally change as a human being and not your political ideology who what you are has to change because they try and build up this little uh, bridge about oh i don't like this thing and this thing and that thing that you believe no it's not about it any any of it all right it's about you existing and that's why this line and this why th why this line will never work now it may work with people like carlene and it may work with your more normie republicans not uh, not all of them are as like openly hateful as this person but like my gosh community coming and speaking out against it do a lot more, a, a lot better of a job at trying to stop it than people who are on the outside. Because at the end of the day, um, Lauren, you could make it part of your platform to be against those things. And even Carlin, you guys could talk about it, but it's never, it's simply the way it works. It's never going to be heard as loud as someone like myself or a gay person coming out of the community. And so I think that when you have, I would venture to say the majority of LGBT people who disagree with those things, when they feel like they can't speak out against it because what happens is the right will say, okay, you can speak out against it, but you still get no voice in the party. You're still disgusting. You're still a freak. They don't want to, then they end up staying on the left and it makes it appear as though all of us agree with those things. But in reality, oftentimes we feel politically homeless. Like we don't have a voice over here and we have to pretend to be like, I don't disagree with drag queen libraries. Why would I? Oh, you're louder than the vid. Oh yeah. My bad. Um, here, let me see if I can turn this up. A little. I'll turn them up a little bit. Um, I mean, I mean, I've seen like a couple, like I've only seen a couple of them. Most of them are fine. Maybe some, maybe there are some that they've seen where, where the drag queen was more revealing than they probably should have been. But most of the ones that I've seen, all of the people who were talking were all in, were all in like, f at least mostly covering dresses. I don't know. Maybe they're like clavicles weren't showing if clavicles are too much. We all know them, them, them sexy collarbones. Lefters or pretends to be along with these things. 
because we don't have a, a political home. So again, I think, so I just want to, one second, just one last thing. So again, I think just in general, okay. the overall point of what I think is that you don't benefit from turning people off from voting for you. You just don't. Okay. Well, listen, here's the deal. Your whole lifestyle really opens the door to everything that you claim to stand against. Now, I'm not really sure if you really stand against the transitioning of children or tra drag queen story hour, or if it's just public opinion. Wait, wait. Or I mean, public or wait, isn't Starbucks one of them like really cucked organizations or something that conservatives hate? Doyle, is that a is that a Starbucks cup? I haven't gone to Starbucks in like two years, I so I wouldn't know. But, like, now, I'm not really sure if you really- That is, that's Starbucks. Wait, what the fuck? Both Blair and, and Doyle are drinking Starbucks right now. Right, isn't, wouldn't they want to withhold their money from such a horrible cucked organization? I guess, or maybe they just don't care. Listen, there's no ethical consent. Uh, my bad, there's no ethical consumption under uh, liberal ideology. <laughs> really stand against the transitioning of children or tra drag queen story hour, or if it's just public opinion. Or if, public, or if public opinion is against you because public opinion matters, you know, I don't really know what's really in your heart. But when you walk out a lifestyle that introduces that to children, I mean, it's there. It is your people. It is part of, you know, that's part of the package deal. It is spearheaded by the LGBTQ movement. Just because you take a normal stance on something, everybody should be opposed to grown men going into young girls' locker rooms or bathrooms. You know, every, it's, that doesn't make you special. Um, um, wait, has Blair ever talked about whether if she goes into, like, the men's or women's restroom. I'm pretty sure she goes into the women's restroom, right? I, I, I'm like quite, I'm like quite sure about that. I'm pretty sure I, I remember her saying something along those lines. No ethical consent. You're right. There is no ethical consent. All consent is unethical, or something. I guess. It makes you normal, you know. And just because you dress up as a woman does not mean that you have a special opinion on something that everybody should oppose. Okay. So Okay. But I mean, yeah, she just completely shot down all of poor Blair. My goodness. She shot down everything Blair was thinking. So, I'm so, not claiming to be special. I'm just a person that shares my opinions online. Don't worry. Listen, all non-consent is unethical as well because sex is banned. And what I'm just trying to tell you is that it's a lot more people than you think within the community, the LGBT community, that agree with me and think the exact same way you may, not the exact same way but on the more radical ideas like children what's happening is blair children. okay is she being sucked in it, 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 it was lauren like using her powers to try and suck her into hell like at this very moment like what was that exact same blair, way. you okay it's not the exact same way but on the more radical ideas like children everything to do with children um it's all the same. But, i mean you can sit here and you can insist that it's a monolith and insist that we all think that way and that it is a package deal but it's really not, especially considering gender ideology and, and how it has manifested now and taken over culture and been popularized. It started a lot long, it started well after the existence and acknowledgement of gay people or transgender people. Transgenderism used to be a purely medical issue that was treated on a purely medical basis. Gender ideology that we see on college campuses and that oftentimes it's communists spreading it, that came much, much. Communists? Uh, we all know about them. <laughs> well. <laughs> The, uh, uh, the real the real people destroying our society, commie trans women on uh, college campuses. Yep, that's that's definitely where the power structure in this country is located or something by by communist by Marxist communist trans women on college campuses. <laughs> the look in her eyes. I could have been Natalie. Yeah, Natalie would only have. I mean, um, yeah. If uh, Blair ended up like Natalie, then uh, she would only have to worry about uh, I don't know, being dunked on on Twitter every now and again. This is just. It's, uh, uh, Blair's been through way worse. Much later. So if I, th I don't, I think that they are two separate things. Okay, so let me, let me, let me. Uh, I have to move the conversation on because I know that Blair again has a hard out, and so I kind of want to give Carlin and, and John a chance to respond to this. So as we're wrapping this up with the big tent, with the idea of the place with gays i i don't want to get your opinion wrong lauren the so place with gays what uh when uh, i see here they were compl they were brought here to answer the g question what do we do with the gays i'm just if you can give me a brief response to this do you do you believe that we should exclude the lgbt influence from the right wing and reestablish sort of like a christian party can you give me your summary in under a minute yeah so uh certainly in conclusion uh the lgbtq community has no platform should have no influence on the party that was based on traditional marriage opposing gay marriage hey boston black thank you so much for the follow for joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pog i appreciate you still is our platform that hasn't changed
but we are going to have to vote on it again soon. You know, are we going to be the party moving forward? Are we going to be the party that compromises on our values uh, that got us this far? Or are we going to stand firm on issues like family, restoring the nuclear family, getting dads back into the home, uh, re-legalizing conversion therapy, which they have stripped parental rights where children now can't even go to get therapy if they choose to change their mind while struggling with gender dysphoria. You know, Wait, rights where children now can't even go to get therapy if they choose to change their mind while struggling. Man, we should add, we should have a comprehensive healthcare plan to make sure that if anyone wanted to go get therapy that they can. Man, isn't that wild? Man, I, a healthcare problem? We should fix it with good healthcare. But she's probably against that too. Maybe that's maybe that's helping the gays out too much. Who knows? Hey, Isotush, thank you so much for the follow. For joining the frenzy and being so incredibly pog. Thank you. With gender dysphoria, you know, the only path forward with this with this lgbtq yeah choose to change their minds i don't know because I, I i i literally think that she thinks that um nine-year-old kids are just walking into the pediatrics by themselves and being like i trans and then the the, the doctors like freaking rushing and falling over themselves to go to go like uh oh like open up like the sterilized uh dress that they have and they open it goes Pah. you know it's like a lays bag it's just filled with like a carbon dioxide or something and they pull it out it's like pristine they slip it on them and they go go goes like start to throw them under the the like uh, uh throw them on the operating table to start cutting off their genitals or whatever like that she thinks that's actually what's happening um no i i, I I'm, I'm pretty sure if you talk to any trans person um that they can tell you the the uh the, the road to get there is a little a little bit more difficult agenda is stripping parents of their rights. Parents are being villainized for not wanting to transition their children. They're getting their ha they're having their children taken away from them. You know, so it is Um wait, if if your child has been diagnosed with like gender dysphoria and then you try to stop them from transitioning, then yeah, you are committing child abuse and I think that you should have your kid taken away. If your child is like diagnosed with being with like depressive episode uh, with like clinical depression or like anxiety or something along these lines and you try and pretend like it doesn't exist and even like demonize them for it then yeah you you should have your kid taken away from you you are in, you are doing child abuse you're doing an abuse it's not a lifestyle that should be included um in the republican party and it's not something we need either electorally it hurts us okay lauren and then uh carlin let me give you so in under a minute can you wrap up your conclusion on this as well yeah, this is about attracting as many people to the movement as we possibly can. I would like everyone who believes in freedom of speech, who believes in protecting the Second Amendment, who believes in protecting all our individual liberties to come to the movement. And I think it's rather ironic that people like Lauren talk about treasuring the traditional family when she was campaigning on Twitter to have my husband of almost 10 years supported. So protecting yeah. the traditional family. Dude, it's still so, it's still like mind blowing that this girl is like a, a just like a super villain, just walking around trying to get people's husbands deported. Man. A breakup mind. I would like to welcome everyone into this movement, including my husband, who will be starting the process of becoming a U.S. citizen a little oh, later on this year. And when he does, when he does, he will be voting in the MAGA movement just like me. John? Uh, I, I think. Oh, wait, no. I'm totally against the road to citizenship now. Wait. Oh, oh no. It's done such horrible thing. No, I'm joking. Um, but. <laughs> wait, I'm a Republican now. <laughs> Um, no, but, uh, yeah, just the, the fact that she thought that she could actually get her, um, husband deported for coming into the country illegally is mine is wow. That's bad. You're just an awful person. Lauren summarizes it pretty well. We're not saying that we're going to turn these people away. We're just saying that their issues can't be represented in our party platform because their issues fundamentally represent something that is deviant from the traditional American society. And these allusions to the constitution as though it's an argument about, about religion, I think is kind of disingenuous. Wait, so you're going to, so we're not going to turn them away. We're just going to make sure that they have no voice. We're going to make sure that we completely exclude them, uh, from, from any party, uh, gatherings. But if they want to like, uh, give us their vote, sure, I guess maybe. Um, because, like I said earlier, okay. Lauren, I, I think, I mean, speaking for myself, I was against these sort of issues before I really came to the faith. But I think it's important to put that into context uh, that like when the Constitution was written, you know, you mentioned the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, even the founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson, who would now be considered to be like the most radically pro freedom of the founding fathers. When he was governor of Virginia, he wanted the punishment for sodomy to be the equivalent of the punishment for uh, punishment for rape, because these were always considered to be deviant acts that were against and went against the social fabric of the nation and the moral fabric of the nation. So, um, um. Is that wait what what was that point? People, people in the 1700s had like real like crazy restrictive um uh, views about uh, uh sex. Um, I mean, all right, yeah, I'm not really radically pro freedom. Listen, there's nothing radical about Doyle. I'll tell you that much.
if you want to come vote for Republicans nominally, that's great, but you can't have your issues represented because all of your issues, whether that be uh, two men getting married or it's just like it all represents something that is the total enshrinement of equality, which is fundamentally a left wing idea. And it always has been <laughs> equality is a left wing. Yeah, he's just against he's just straight up against equality, man. I've never see the thing the uh, Doyle. Yeah, still like Doyle. He's I mean. He's bought into the positions. He's thought them through. The only thing is, because usually how, how we debate, because it's interesting, right? Um, trying to debate, trying to debate someone like Doyle, because uh, it would be a massive departure from what norm, what people are normally into. Because people, like one big way to argue with a conservative is be like, uh, I remember like Destiny, and you can say whatever you th whatever you think about Destiny. He was like, like conservatives, like lots of conservatives are like one or two questions away from having their entire world view, world view like blown apart. The thing is with Doyle, he's not that because he's thought through those things. Like usually when I'm arguing with a conservative, I'll like take their logic to the uh, to the logical endpoint. But he's already bought into that position. He's already there. Like, it, usually I'll say, oh, conservatives, they're against equality. And then the conservative will be like, no, I love equality. And they'll be like, yeah, but you voted for that, and that's bad. And they'll be like, you stinky liberal and your debate tactics, I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you, you and your mangy mutt. You know, usually usually that's how it goes, but he's just completely bought in there. Um, so uh, arguing with someone like Doyle will take a, man, I, I, he, he, he does sound like a difficult debate, yeah. And then Blair, uh, give us your conclusion. I guess my conclusion would be that this is all kind of silly. You have half the country unconstitutionally locked down. People dying alone right now can't go to funerals. Um, half the con con unconstitutional. Don't you think if they were so unconstitutionally locked down, then the Supreme Court would have stepped in on any of these rules yet? Don't you think that like lots of people are? It's been it's been like a year now. Don't you think that people would have taken this to the Supreme Court? So either you, they, you, uh, those cases lost and you think that the Supreme Court's cucked or you think um, or, or no one's brought it up there to the Supreme Court. So no one's ruled on it, but you think it's unconstitutional. OK, people out of work, like the entirety of the country the only living with almost sucks. no dignity out of all of a sudden we have lockdowns and just so much stuff to worry about. We're bombing Syria. You know, um, I just can't I can't wrap my head around this being even remotely close to the most important conversation happening on the right or anywhere. Um, and I think that... Man, Blair's actually got it. This is useless and nobody cares. That's one of the big things. It's yeah. also kind of just over. Um, I guess I'm just kind of saying what I've already said before, but um, Trumpism is the future and Trumpism isn't, unfortunately, what you've seen with, with Lauren and with John today. Um, and they're certainly free to advocate for um, an increase or a rise in social conservatism. But speaking for... Um, a really big chunk of my generation, which are going to be the people running things very soon, and they already are. Um, you know, what Carlin said earlier about we grew up in a time where we were very, very turned off in social conservatism, and a lot of the more radical ideas that you're seeing now um, in regards to gender ideology, wokeness, it is the pendulum effect of social conservatism. It is. It, it was, you know, I grew up in a time where when I was five years old, I was naturally feminine getting beat up by little Christian kids in my school. And um, my gosh. that was kind of the era that we were in and things changed and people got disgusted with that. And the pendulum is now to the point where now you have people being disgusted with the opposite end. So um, I guess big time party is the future. Not a huge time. You don't have to compromise on everything, but right. you do have to acknowledge the anomalies in people and that everyone's different. And if you're going to be searching for, you know, pure, perfect, ideologically consistent 100% of the time people to only be part of your movement, you're not really going to find many of them. Okay. Especially because a lot of these social conservatives on Twitter that, that you know, love to talk about LGBT people being excluded, um, a lot of them are secretly gay behind the scenes. All so. right, well, I gotta cut, I gotta oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> Nick. She's... That's that Nick, uh, that, that Fuentes subtweet. Oh, my gosh. They, uh, they point, they paid to get into that boy's hole. Do all right. On it. Wait, do I have a mod here right now? Can I have a, um, can I have a poll? Do you think I, I want a poll chat on whether they think like unironically Nick and that like Nick and that uh that cat boy, cat boy Cammy. Do you think that they actually had sex? Do you think that they actually fucked? If I have a if I have a mod around, I need that poll to get going because I want to I want to see if you guys actually buy in. What about Fuentes?
Got to cut you off there. That's a loaded statement. I know, John, people want to respond to that stuff. Maybe you are secretly gay behind the scenes. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're super straight. It doesn't. Oh, Doyle. Oh, Doyle. Look, he's uh, he's thinking about whether or not he deleted those grinder messages. <laughs> it really matter, guys. I want to hear your thoughts below in the comments. We could kind of go on with this conversation forever. And I want to let you know something. Obviously, you know, Carlin and Lauren and Blair and John coming on. This is something that we don't get a lot of. Um, and before I wrap things up, I just want uh, to let you guys know that you can follow Carlin, you can follow Lauren, you can follow Blair and John Cringe. if you like them. And I also want to encourage you, DM them, I believe. Start Wait. conversations. They'll probably block you if you're a troll. But I mean, like, genuinely engage with them and follow them if you like what they believe. And uh, okay. you, John, for coming on. My name is Elijah Schaefer, the host of Slightly Offensive, the best worst show on Blaze TV. Make sure that you leave a five-star review for this podcast. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. All right. Anything. Well, there we go. We did it. Hey, there you go. And we we made it. The end. Roll credits. That was really bad. All right. So, okay. So, this was bad all right this was real bad that lady that lady on there was honestly a, car a, a cartoon version of like a conservative and doyle is just what i is just the is is i guess what i describe when i make when i'm like making fun of conservatives because <laughs> he's bought into all the positions already he already hates equality all right it's a left wing it's a left wing position uh we we hate equality <laughs> That's that's for uh, quality. That's for the birds. Um, uh, Blair spent the entire time trying to defend her own humanity, which must have been uh, soul crushing, or maybe she's just used to it. That uh, used to it at this point. I honestly cannot tell you. Both are incredibly sad. Um, how she took those kicks straight to the liver and then just kind of sat. Then it's kind of sat there. She pushed back a little bit, but none, but none in the same force or or like I even think meaningfully addressed the sort of um vitriol the venom that she was getting spat in her eyes by uh both doyle and lauren uh carlene came in with the, probably the best perspective that i could imagine that someone of her position could um it was actually a little surprising she uh she went as hard as she did but you know um sometimes they impress sometimes they don't so that's what we got from there uh that was bad but i mean i'm glad we went through it man it was like watching a a wwe match with that one that was um that's a spicy one right there.